Hey guys, what's up? It is the Kerbal Killer here, and today we are going to be starting a new series where we are going to try to get our empire to other worlds in the Kerbal Solar System and expand our reach over the galaxy. And so let's start. We're gonna start off with trying to get to Duna because that's obviously the first place you want to go. You've got mail. You've got mail. What on earth? Dear the Kerbal Killer. Your tyrannical empire is coming to a close. I will end you and your pathetic company once and for all. There may be w there may only be one space company, and it will be mine. I will conquer the galaxy, and there is nothing you can do to stop me. Prepare for the end. From Milo. Oh, this is bad. Milo is uh, <clears throat> one of my Kerbal knots who went rogue a while, a while um, uh, back on me. I thought he just went crazy and killed himself or something. No, this is bad. We have to get to work immediately to stop him. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to launch a spy satellite into orbit so that we can keep an eye on the Kerbal Space Center to watch out for any ICBMs or any sort of invasion plans that Milo has prepared. We don't know what he's capable of because we don't really keep track of how many Kerbals are in the Space Center because so many die so frequently that there's no point really trying to keep track of them all because it's just a waste of our time and resources that we can use to be spending to send more into space and hopefully not die. So now we are just going to send this thing up into orbit. We're going to put uh, some stuff on it so that we can uh, track everything. We're using one of our brand new technologies, which is the laser system computing technology. It's going to allow us to... Uh, track everything that comes within range of the Kerbal Space Center so anything on that side of the Kerbin that we can see we'll be able to track with this uh, new technology and make sure that we have a nice read on it and we're going to use also some new technology that we have which is uh, we're going to use these little cone type things so that we can keep the uh, satellite protected while it's in atmosphere and that way that uh, and this way um, we don't get any air resistance and we keep everything, because this is a very expensive satellite, we keep everything inside of it nice and tidy so that nothing gets destroyed. So we're going to use this new technology to get into space and we can hopefully show Milo what he's up against, because this is brand new stuff that he knows nothing about. So <clears throat> we're going to show him what he's up against. And so we're going to just, we're going to obviously need some things to power this and we're going to need a lot of new technology to try to combat this foe. Now, Milo is a uh, mute, so he can't speak or anything like that, but he is quite dangerous. He's uh, very intelligent. He's probably one of the smartest Kerbals that we've had in the uh, Space Center. He's not the best pilot, that's obviously Jebediah, and he would take offense if I insulted him by saying Milo is better than him. But Milo is not to be under, uh, not to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Underestimated. He's very capable at what he does. He's very smart, and so we are not going to take this as some sort of joke. We are also, we're going to launch this in a fairing, mostly for air resistance, obviously. That's kind of dangerous. But also because we want to make sure that the general public does not find out about this. That way, uh, because when you get some sort of threat like this, it's not a really good idea to tell the general public because then they'll be frightened of it. And that is not what we want to have. We don't want to have a bunch of people running around screaming thinking that they're going to be murdered by some sort of nuclear strike. We want to keep everything, we want to keep everyone nice and calm so that this way uh, there's no mass confusion or panic that's going to happen. So now we're just going to design the rocket. We're using all of these new technologies that we've researched. And the one problem that I do see us having in the future is that we don't really have weapons technology. We're not a weapon company. We are a peaceful space organization that just happens to accidentally murder a few Kerbals here and there. But mistakes happen, so it's kind of natural. Milo, on the other hand, thinks that we are a tyrannical empire, as he just stated, and that we are purposely trying to myrtle, murder, uh, myrtle, brilliant, trying to murder all of Kerbal kind. So we're going to have to do some sort of weapons testing in the future to try to get our weapons up to date and up to scratch. You hopefully we'll be able to use our laser technology computing system to uh, hopefully you launch some missiles and different uh, different weapons of mass destruction to try to fight Milo. I'm pr we're probably uh, 
overestimating him, but that's probably that's a good thing because he's a very dangerous foe. He's very intelligent. He's quite capable, and we do not want to underestimate his power. One person, one uh, other Kerbal that we do know is with him. And we've actually uh, he was one of our top Kerbals, and he decided to join Milo. Is uh, Rorad, Rorad Carmen. He was a uh, uh, he's an MR Kerbal, so he doesn't speak very many words. Actually, he's not very smart. He's probably not going to contribute much to uh, Milo, besides the fact that uh, he probably is the one that typed the message, because Milo doesn't obviously understand the English la English language, so he couldn't have typed that himself, so we're assuming that it was uh, Rorad that typed that for him. And so we are adding another new technology that we've added, which is Mechanical Jeb. We decided to copy Jebediah's brand since he is the best pilot, and we're going to use it as an automation system, so we can just keep track of everything on our ships. And we cut pretty much copied his brain, and then we're going to use all of the information that this robot, this artificial intelligence, has given us to make our ships better. Obviously, that was a small fault right there with the uh, uh, solid fuel boosters tipping over. That was not Mechanical Jeb's fault, that was just our fault. And we forgot to strut everything up, so if it doesn't work, add struts. That's pretty much how it goes here. So we're almost at the end of the building phase, if my uh, timer here is correct. So we're soon going to be launching this thing into geosynchronous orbit, which I believe, if I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's like 2,868.4 kilometers something like that. It's a very, very high up. It's actually what normal GPS satellites and, uh, GPS and I think uh, television, or um, radio, no, not radio, television uh, satellites use. Because a geosynchronous orbit basically means that uh, from the ground, it looks like the satellite is in the same position on the sky, like, uh, forever. But what's really happening is that, uh, you're so high up that you actually rotate at the same speed that the body that you're orbiting around, uh, you orbit at the same speed as it rotates. So you're pretty much rotating just as fast as it's, uh, as it's rotating. So you pretty much, uh, are, s if you're looking at the ground, like if you're looking from the satellite to the ground or from the ground to the satellite, it looks like it, it's in the same spot. So it looks like we are just about ready for launch here. We're just going to add our advanced SAS because I always forget that. And now let's launch this bad boy. Uh, here we go. Got our Thora engines, which are also a new technology that we've recently developed. And we have liftoff. These things are pretty much just massive solid fuel boosters. Like, absolutely massive. They, pro they produce like 805 kilowatt, not kilowatts, kilonewtons of thrust which is a lot of thrust. Not, actually, I'm not even using the mainsail on the stage. I'm just using those solid fuel boosters. That's how insane these things are. Getting a little bit of lag. I'm not sure if that's my uh, Sony Vegas or if that's the actual video. Hopefully it's not the video. I did get some weird frame drops while I was recording this, but I doubled the speed on the video, so hopefully you guys won't actually see any of that. Now I'm applying a little bit of thrust from the mainsail just so I can keep the... Uh, ship steady because obviously the solid fuel boosters don't have thrust ve vectoring like the uh, mainsail does. But those are about to drop anyway and they got us 10 kilometers into the air which is very nice. It's enough to actually start our gravity burn before we drop them. There we go. Once we get above 14,000 that's when I usually like to kick up my engine to full thrust because we're at the thickest part of the atmosphere there. And we're actually overheating our engine quite a bit so I decreased the throttle a little there. And now we're going to go into full gravity burn here. As you can see, the citizens down on the, around the Kerbal Space Center are uh, clapping and applauding, thinking that they have a new sort of technology in space, but what it's actually doing is going to keep them alive from Milo's rage. We don't know what really drove him to start a rebellion, but we are hopefully going to find out that in the near future, because it is quite dangerous to, to have a, a public, the, pu the public know about this kind of an enemy. We're probably really overestimating him, but I want to make sure just in case that uh, we don't underestimate his skills. It's better overestimating his skills than underestimating his skills. It's most likely just him in Rorad trying to scare us a bit. They're most likely just trying to scare us and not even going to launch some, any sort of an attack, but you want to be careful just in case. 
So here we go, now we're just starting our orbit burn. We still actually have our mainsail here, which is pretty nice. I wasn't thinking that we would get this the mainsail into orbit, but we did. And there we go, got a nice circular orbit. So next thing that we have to do is we have to get out to the 2,000 kilometers that we have to get to, 2,800 kilometers. So that's actually a pretty good distance. So I'm just using a mechanical jab to create this node for me because I cannot be really be bothered for that. I probably could, it's just I'm too lazy. There we go, I'm just screwing around with it because it's telling me that I'm not allowed to have an apoapsis and a periapsis at the exact same uh, distance, which makes sense, but... I'm just screw I'm just gonna mess around with it until I get what it wants me to do. I'm just gonna change the apoapsis first. There we go, that's what we want. And so we're going to get ready to burn at that node and get that high altitude. It's very high, so this new technology is probably the only way the new uh, the new tech the new uh, computer technology and the new uh, receiver dish here it's been upgraded a bit, so we can actually get that kind of communication from that long distance. It's also right over the space center, so it, uh, it's very easy to communicate with the satellite. It's very responsive, which is good. You need that in a good satellite. Here we go, just rotating around to the burn point, and let's get this show on the road here. A few seconds, I bl yeah, I actually have a mechanical jab doing this burn for me. Just so I'm testing its abilities to see if it's uh, actually worth keeping it, because it is quite an expensive uh, piece of technology. And there we go, now we have our poodle engine out, so we can do the rest of this with the, this engine, the rest of the circularization that is, and it is quite a circularization. And for some reason, Mechanical Jab decided to get me an escape velocity, just cause. But, I'm not gonna argue. It's, uh, still in beta. <laughs> there we go, so now we have our circularization, uh, node there. And now we're going to get ready to circularize once we get to our apoapsis. Here we go. And then we are going to unveil the satellite. Hopefully, no one, uh, none of our, uh, what am I talking about? <laughs> none of the uh, telescope, none of our scientific telescopes are able to pick up this satellite. Because if they do and they find out what's going on, that will be very bad. But, unfortunately, obviously, since we don't want the public to know about this issue, we're going to have to test our weapons somewhere else besides low curve and orbit, because that's kind of dangerous in case someone sees the explosions in the air, because that's what we're going for, big explosions. So what we're going to do is we're going to the moon. We're probably going to go to the moon, or even Minimus might be a better place to visit, because Minimus is so far away, it's very hard to see it from a pedestrian, sat uh, pedestrian satellite, a pedestrian telescope. So that's probably where we're going to go to test our weapons. Either that or the dark side of the moon, because uh, that's obviously, the moon is tightly locked to Kerbin, so no one can see the other side of it unless you actually go to the other side. And uh, that might be a very good place to uh, test our weapons, actually, so we might be going there. Oh, my steam just opened up for no reason. There we go. Here we go. Looks like we are about to finish circularizing. As you can see, we are pretty much rotating at the same speed, but we are going a little bit faster, so I'm just going to try to slow that down a bit. And there we go. It looks like we have just about the orbit we want in this circular orbit. We are going a few meters per second faster, so let's just see if we can fix that. Yeah, what is that? Like 0.4 meters per second. Just to change it, it's probably not really going to be worth it, but hey. So every time we circle around Kerbin, it's uh, uh, every time we circle around like behind the sun, we do one full full orbit around Kerbin. It's going to be one full day on Kerbin, so that'll be good. And as you can see, we have a nice clear view of where any sort of rocket could be flying towards Kerbal Space Center. And we are going to test our new technology in a sec once we have our circular orbit. There we go. Let's de deploy all that. Nice. And there she is. Ah, uh, what a beauty. There we go. And now let's just kill our angular momentum, turn that on, and we have a little bit of a spaz attack there, so let's just uh <laughs> let's just time warp to stop that. That was kind of weird, but hey. There we go. Time warp again. And there. And let's turn on this computer. There it is. Now let's test out our new technologies. Let's try to see if we can spot the uh, tracking station from here. Oh, look at that zoom on that camera. As you can see, it is quite pixelated from this high up, but if we 
uh, were to try to spot like an intercontinental missile, we'd easily be able to spot it from here long before we'd be able to reach Caribou Space Center and then launch some sort of a, uh, some sort of counter device to try to counter, obviously, <laughs> some sort of a rocket to try to destroy the ICBM before it gets too close to the Space Center to do actually any damage. Alright guys, this concludes this episode of Milo's Revenge. Subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video. Comment and share if you feel like doing that, I guess. And uh, tune in next time to see what happens next. Thanks for watching. Peace out.